everybody and welcome back to my channel. I just wanted to do a showcase video for one of my player collections. I've just recently got in a couple Lou Brock cards and I just wanted to showcase that collection because I'm pretty much done with it at this point. Um, so starting from more of the modern stuff, I've got this uh, game used memorabilia piece from 2001 Topps Tribute. It's interesting to see the old game used uh, stuff from, you know, this is almost 20 year old card. Uh, just very, you know, very novel ideal at the time. So there's a little bit of wood chips there. Now all the other stuff is going to be vintage, starting with his last card, this 1980 Tops. Shares with Carl Yastrzemski. Uh, they both hit the two thousand, or excuse me, the three thousand hit club back in 1979. Cool car to him. And that was one of my more recent pickups. Here is 1979 stolen base leader card. Shows for the season and for the career. He held both those records before Ricky Henderson ultimately goes and breaks that record. Cool card from 79 his last regular player card here's another card that i just got got in the mail today so the latest in the in the uh the brock collection it's an opeachy um i wanted to get it in a near mint to mint eight and i was able to do a buy it now for under 10 bucks on this and it's a classic case of i'm just trying to pick up a few small odds and end cards for my player collections you know prices have gone up but fortunately i've got all the all the all the big stuff already purchased for the most part Cool card from 78. Got an Opeachy from 77. My daughter's in the background. Uh, we just picked up a new puppy for her yesterday. <laughs> She's playing with the dog. Enjoying the, enjoying the new puppy. Got the regular tops in the 77 as well. On to 76, uh, a Kellogg's card from 76, that 3D. Don't have a lot of, he's got quite a few league leaders for the stolen base uh, department. But uh, this one I got more just to have his autograph. Joe Morgan in there as well. He only had 56. Big fan of the 76 set. If I could get this thing open, it's kind of got stuck together there. Sorry about that. But his uh, 76 tops, like the all star medallion on that. I've always been a fan of that. Cool card. Very, very inexpensive, that 76 card. Well, it used to be. Who knows what it is now? Here's a, uh, let's focus here, 79 or 75 highlight. And the 75 itself, a little nicer grade on that, 7.5. I've bought all these cards. I mean, you'll notice that a lot of these are the new Lighthouse holders. Some of them are, like this one right here. But I bought these cards uh, primarily uh, three to four years ago when I started working on that Lou Brock collection. Kind of got sidetracked with other projects and just... Uh, but now I'm just finishing up with small odds and end pieces. Here's an interesting 74 stamp. Paid just a few dollars for that because it's just an excellent five grade. Somebody clearly uh, missed the mark when they sent that in to get graded. I've never sent any cards to get in graded. I bought, bought all these already previously graded. Here's a nice uh, 74. Got that one when I was uh, in the last year and a half. Here's a leader's card. Like I said, I don't have all his leader's cards. I think he's got one from the 75 set. Maybe a couple others. But uh, primarily, I was just focusing on their the primary player card here, such as this 73 cool card. Seventy two. Here's a seventy one. Now uh, this is not a. Uh, PSA slab. This is a BSG slab. It's got a really sharp, a really good eye appeal on this. A really sharp card as far as corners and edges. And uh, centering on it is excellent. It's got a uh, surface crease right there. And then a little one there, which is the VG3, which is a well-deserved grade. I'm not familiar with this BSG grading, but as long as they're not slapping a 10 on everything, 
Uh, I paid way less than I would have paid for this car raw. raw. I think I might have paid a, a, sh a shade over three bucks. And I got combined shipping on it because I bought a couple other of these uh, cards from the seller. So uh, whenever I can get a card uh, cheaper than or around the price, I'd pay for it raw. I would. And this is a high number, 625. So this card is very, is very expensive in a PSA slab and a high grade. So I just settled for this VG3. It's a placeholder, but I'm, I'm like, with cards prices booming and, and I'm, I'm being a collector, I'm like, I'm not going to sell it. So I really could care less what the grade is. I just wanted a nice slab copy and now I've got it. Here's a cool Milton Bradley game piece from 1970. Oh, I like that 70 Kellogg's really cool card here. That was the first year that Kellogg's did that 3D set. This is 1970. The 1970s got a lot of good imagery in it. I'll be honest with you. It's it's not they're not action shots, but they're good shots like him in the batting uh, the batting shell. I'm looking to get the Harmon Killebrew 1970 tops. I love that card showing him with the uh, in the dugout there with the bats. It's a popular card. It keeps going up in price, and I always get out bid whenever I bid on it. Here's a major league photo stamp, hand cut, and a nine. Here's a cool card. Sporting News did that set in 1969 where they did the World Series special like newspaper articles. It's pretty cool. I like it because Gibson wins seventh in a row. But uh, game four of the World Series got, got a nice... And in cases like this, like so I, these cards are expensive in eights and sevens even, so I just got it in a six. You know, I really, didn't really care that much about the grade. Here's his all-star card from 69 to 7. Here's his uh, his regular 69. Now this is just an excellent five. I totally uh, like this card in a, in a near mint seven or higher is extremely expensive. I think it's got some sort of centering issues. So I just got this in a five. It's got really good eye appeal. I mean, it's a good solid five as fives go. I mean, this looks like a six. I'll be honest with you, maybe a 6.5. It's got a little bit of a, a poor corner and the centering isn't great on it, but Overall, I'm like, yeah, this was a little probably probably overgraded on this, but just a cool piece. No shame in a five. Here's another one of those uh, World Series game highlight cards. That's cool. These cards have held up over time, so you can get an eight in a at a very affordable price on these. This is another example where uh, eights all day on these All Star sixty eight. I've got the whole 68 All-Star subset in an 8 or higher. And the Lou Brock card is gorgeous. Um, 68 was a good year for Lou Brock Tops cards. And I'll show you this last one. Just a gorgeous 68 base here. Him swinging there. That, the way that the red uniform pops on that card. Love it. Lou Brock, just a gentleman, man. An absolute role model for everyone. He's just a, a good... Good guy all across the board. Great athlete, great ball player, and even better person. Look at him there. Love those old cards from the Cardinals in the late 60s. I mean, they, they had some teams back then. You got you had Cepeda in 67. You had Maris on the team. Of course, uh, McCarver. Lou Brock, Kurt Flood. Just a great team. And then, of course, the... Ace of the staff, my favorite pitcher, Bob Gibson. And, of course, you had a young Steve Carlton on that staff as well. So, man, that, those are some good teams in the late 60s that the Cardinals were putting out. Card clubbers with uh, Kurt Flood. His 66 card, this card looks so much better than the 6. I mean, this thing has got razor sharp corners and edges. It's like the centering is a little bit off. And that's the only thing holding this out back. The, the person probably submitted this and said no qualifiers. And this was probably an 8, slightly OC, if at best OC. And they came back a 6, man, because this is just a clean card for a 6. Man, this thing, I mean, I couldn't imagine a 6 looking any better than that. And then his first card in a Cardinals uniform, just a gorgeous 1965 set. Look at that smile. Just, uh... Really, really sharp card, and love. Like I said, love those cardinal co uh, colors. 
Now back uh, before the Cubs made the horrible decision to trade him away. <laughs> Where I like the uh, 64 Lou Brock there. Just weird seeing him in a Cubs uniform. Took me a while to pull the trigger on this 64 and finally just bit the bullet. And then uh, here's another card. Uh, I totally sacrificed grade on this, but it doesn't matter because this is still a gorgeous card here in a VGX4. You know, as prices and vintage continue to go and uh, explode. I wouldn't say explode, but just grow. There's no shame in buying something in a lower grade. You know, I, I, I set high expectations on myself to have everything in like a 7 or higher, but it's definitely not needed. Uh, you can enjoy a card just to have it in hand and a nice grade and a nice clean slab like this. Can't go wrong with it. And uh, that is it. I've got uh, I've got his 62 and a Nearman 7. Bought that for 150 bucks. I want to say maybe six, seven years ago. I'm going to buy it now. Glad I did. It's more than doubled in value. And uh, who knows what it's at now. But uh, it's in my safe deposit box. Uh, but I'm going to do a table tap recap and then we'll go from there. And the tabletop here, starting with the 63. Just beautiful vintage cards, that's all they are. Coming up to the 60s, on into the 70s, it's about halfway through his career. Sorry about that. And then wrapping it up with that 1980. Once again, everybody, appreciate your posts, your comments. I'll talk to you again soon.